Disney Plus and Hulu turned a profit for the first time, but the standout results in the quarter were overshadowed by the media giant's expectations for a softer third quarter for streaming. Here with more on this, we're joined now by S&P Global Ratings Media and Telecom's Managing Director Naveen Sarma and Yahoo Finance's very own Alexandra Canal. Naveen, it is good to have you on the show. So listen, you know, Disney reported that stock is getting shelled in today's trade, Naveen. I'm just curious what you make of that reaction in the stock. You think it's an overreaction, Naveen, or, or no, it makes sense to you? Oh, thank you for having me, first of all. I, I'm not an equity analyst, so I can't really comment on how the equity markets might be reacting to this. From the credit side, when we look at this name, um, what we saw was good execution in the quarter um, and you know, an improvements both in the streaming side as well as on the advertising side. Um, I'm not surprised at all that they gave a little bit of, of soft guidance for the parks for the third quarter. We saw that with Comcast. It's a question now of whether it's a function of consumers pulling back on their spending because they're being stressed economically or because they're finding more options to go to do things, cruises, travel. And so they may not necessarily be going to theme parks um, exclusively like they did a couple of years ago. Yeah, Naveen, I, I want to pick up on that Parks commentary that we heard on the call because management did say that they're seeing a bit of a pullback compared to what we saw post-COVID when it comes to demand. Are you at all concerned that the Parks business is not going to be able to keep up the momentum that we've seen heading into the end of the year, especially as you say, the consumers may be a bit squeezed? Yeah, and look, Parks are, are a cyclical business, and so you shouldn't be surprised to see if consumers come under pressure or we head into a recession. Um, that consumers pull back on spending. But I think more importantly, what we saw in the last couple of years was tremendous demand to, for consumers to go to parks. They weren't traveling internationally because of COVID restrictions. And they had a lot of cash left over from, from a lot of the, um, um, you know, a lot of the savings that they, they built up over time because of COVID. You know, consumers are now spending a lot of money doing other things as well. They're traveling a lot more. They're going on cruises, which is what, um, which is what Comcast talked about. So I think there's a lot more options for consumers. And I think it's eventually you're going to see a normalization towards normal growth rates. Maybe this is the start of that. Naveen, let's talk streaming specifically. So Disney says, you know, reaches profitability in fiscal Q4. I'm just interested, Naveen, you know, how you think long term about how growth and profitability could look like for that, that streaming segment. Sure. So getting to profitability for any of these legacy guys is, I think, really important. And, um, and Disney is you know, having launched ahead of everybody else and, and having greater scale than everybody else is, is getting to that point. Whether or not they can get up to the 20 or 25% margins that Netflix currently has, time will tell. Um, there isn't a reason why they shouldn't unless you consider the fact that they have a lot of sports programming and that may pull down margins a bit. But there's, there's nothing that, that shouldn't prevent these guys or any of the other players from getting to um, you know, you know, twenty percent margins or at least the profitability. But that's just it's a matter of scale, and and Disney is ahead of everybody else in terms of that, and so that's why they're they're showing you know they break even already. And part of that journey is going to be a crackdown on password sharing. That's something that CEO Bob Iger elaborated with on the call. We've also seen price hikes across the board here. Given the intense competition, the increases we've seen at other big streaming platforms, do you think that Disney has the pricing power to really compete here? Well, what they're doing is interesting, right? They, they started off with just Disney+. Plus. They've put um, Hulu in as a tile, and they talked about putting in ESPN Plus as a tile later on this year, that gives them the ability to raise price. And so it's about content. It's also about the quality of content and the broad, um, the, 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 you know, the, the broad amount of content that they have. Look, by itself, Disney Plus is a great product. You layer in Hulu, you, you add um, the ability to go get additional customers, you know, with R-rated programming, with general entertainment, and then you layer in sports, and, and sports as we've seen, not just on television, but also on streaming, is a great way to uh, to attract and retain customers and also to be able to raise price. And so Disney seems to be aiming for a broader bundle of, of streaming services, and that should allow them to do uh, to, to raise price. Naveen, what'd you make of the linear numbers we saw too? I'm just interested to take your take on traditional TV and where you think it heads from here. Are, are we bottoming here, Naveen? <laughs> bottoming is a hard word. Look, I think we think that cord cutting will continue at kind of the pace that we've seen in the past year, which is about 6% if you include um, the virtual streamers into that, in, into that calculation. 
we don't think that's going to be. Um, we'd like to see a, a, you know, maybe maybe there's a bottoming out when, in terms of cord cutting in the future, but we just don't see it at the moment. And so we're not forecasting that. I think on the advertising side, you've seen a number of companies report um, advertising, uh, linear advertising revenue down 6%, five to 6%. I think that's probably where you're going to be going forward. And so the question that all of these companies now need to address is can they grow their streaming revenues, advertising, faster than the linear advertising declines. And what we saw in the quarter was Disney was able to do that if you include sports as well. Naveen, it was great to have you today. Thanks for helping us kick off the show. Thank you very much for having me.